Greetings, everyone. Tim Anderson here, aka Renfail, followed by Joey, aka Chris the is Crab here. Lord. She's not actually in on the brainstorming session. Do you want to come say hi? We're just recording a video. You don't have to come say hi if you don't want to, because you're doing concept art for the project. Just come say hi real quick. We will have you join us. One of these. She's all worried because her hair's. She's on Netflix mode. <laughs> Nobody cares about your hair. Nobody Chris. cares about your hair, Chris. All right, so all right, you can go away now. <laughs> shoo, shoo. She's fan making fun of me because I'm wearing my holy shirt. She's like, "Don't raise your arms when you're in the video. It looks unprofessional." And I'm like, "Woo! It's in both of them, baby." <laughs> it's called my comfy shirt. All right, so welcome to the latest brainstorming episode for Project Drowned. Um, I think this is episode three. First episode, we we were just doing some of the world history world building second episode we dove into the um basically the the full single player game and we lined out the whole story in like the first half of the game scenes and everything else tonight we're coming back around to let me see if i got this document set up properties uh project Drummond. yeah there it is right there this is the story notes world history races story stuff it's just got some very basic stuff in here so tonight we're going to be kind of going off of this and um hopefully you know if we can get it done tonight that'd be great but the idea is tonight we're gonna try to wrap up the you know kind of what's happening now in the world so that i have a starting place to begin fleshing out the outline for the novels um and and because you know i want to do like 50 chapters so i need to be able to flesh that out completely and also this will help dictate a little bit of the map i know some of the world history that i've been working on already which doesn't affect necessarily the game as it's going right now but it affects the history of like why are the high elves and the ice elves off and you know why do they why are they myths and legends at this point why did the human where did the humans come from you always have to have that type of story in your world you know numenor in Lord of the Rings Online, or Lord of the Rings Online, in Lord of the Rings, in Middle Earth, the Numenorians came from an island. The island was displaced. They made it over to the mainland where the elves lived. That's how humans got there. Every world that has, you know, elves and stuff, it it works like that. Um, there is a moment in time where the races come together. So that's that's kind of already ironed out. I kind of already figured out, you know, why the humans came to this region and what happened there. And there's an elven civil war. Is that yeah, okay, never mind. There's an there's an Elven Civil War that took place, and there was a Quantum War where humans had technology at one point in time. Um, so that all is stuff that uh, has evolved over time. That's stuff that happened thousands of years ago. We're more focused on what is happening in the here and now. So the one thing we know for sure is that magic is illegal. That's one of the core principles. Magic is illegal, and that spawns from this whole idea of like setting it during the time period of when the Jedi were outlawed, like Star Wars Rebels, the show, you know, they're hunt that you know, most of the Jedi have been hunted down and killed, the ones that are remaining are in hiding. And so I liked that principle, and so one of the main characters of the book is a mage in hiding, um, who is acting as someone different, um, and then is forced to use that magic. Um, to rescue another one of the main characters who is a young character who's also going to have latent magic abilities and then it gives that person a mentor and so now they're going to have a reason to be on the run from the authorities above and beyond just being like thieves or whatever the case may be so so we know that magic is illegal the one thing we were talking about last time is whether or not it was just magic or if this was something where it was like in that show is talking about which i remember the name of the show now it's called cursed um, and it's about uh, the Lady of the Lake. Before she became the Lady of the Lake, she had Excalibur. The church was actively hunting down all fey kind because they had, yeah, they're evil. They're, they're Satan, you know, basically is what the church was saying. Um, now, I, I think the problem I have with that idea, because we did briefly toss it around the other day, the problem I have with that is... Well, the, I guess it's a potential problem I see with that, is that's going to make it next to impossible for our party of adventurers to ever really ever go into any towns that are ran by humans. Because two of the party members are elves, one of the party members is a dwarf, 
one of the party members a halfling or a, a, a brownie, excuse me. So four of the six members are non-human. So if we made all, I think maybe that's something that that the story arc could move towards. Like maybe the where we're at right now, it's just magic, and maybe something is going to happen that is going to cause the paladins and the church entity to then decide that it's going to go from magic users to all human or all non, fey kind non yeah all non-human so let's just start with magic is outlawed we still have to figure out why was magic outlawed um some of the you know one of the ideas we had was that there was a um there was which i think that's the idea we stick with anyway there was some type of a pandemic within the last so let's say 50 years um and the paladins were trying to take care of it. They couldn't. So they called in the help of the mages, which means we're going to have to come up with a mage. Let me put this down in the notes. We're going to need a mage. Um, we need a mage uh, guild group, etc. to to be the equivalent of the church as they were called in to help with the pandemic. Because um, what were the mage groups in Dragonlance? Mage groups. I don't remember. I know there was like the, yeah, the towers, the towers of high sorcery. Famous buildings. Wild magic. Uh, towers of high sorcery well because there was different types of mages there was the black mages the red mages and the white mages and they all like followed the cycle of the moon like the yes, red moon I, the I white moon that. the black moon it's, it's i need to finish reading i need to read i they're on my bookshelf yeah so that might be something that you know the who the mages are and how many groups of mages there are that's a that's a detail that we can flesh out a little bit later um the important thing right now is that we have to have a mage guild equivalent of the church so that they got brought in to help with the pandemic um and things go wrong and it mutates and kills everybody off um and it like the land around it becomes killed off and they have to i like the idea that hemvar put in chat um like having a magical barrier erected around it so i think all of that's i think all, all that's great so what we could do is just on the map we're going to need to figure out where did that happen you know mm -hmm. it, it needs how, to how big was the radius yeah right it needs to be a human it needs to be, it needs to be a human town human settlement human it needs to be a human city so that it's big that it had a big enough impact um well that's what we talked about using the harbor city because then it could have spread you know if it mutated them or whatever it could have spread to different races if we were going to do it that way because right. it was at the harbor let me put this in the notes uh, yeah, the ships needs because needs... because we had talked about it affecting only one race like if the one race had a pandemic or whatever could have been the brownies whatever if it didn't affect them right away they got on the ships and that's how it spread because they got on the ships i don't know well that actually that makes sense if 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 this is going to be part of the arc um because maybe, well, it's tricky because for that to have happened, if we're setting this 50 years ago, the ships would have gone out 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. It would have already started to be a thing everywhere mm -hmm. if it's affecting more than one race. Um, hmm. I'd say we keep it to humans now for, for the moment. That because that gives it. Well, there's another way to look at this. Actually, as I'm sitting here, think about it. It there is another reason why the church would want to pursue all non-humans. 
is if because they if they think that the non-humans were the ones who created this sure and that's or why maybe I'm... no no humans were affected maybe or something no no what i'm getting at is is, is if if the disease is only affecting humans and not any uh... of the non-humans then that, uh, that get, it's the positive. it's the other reason why they would hate the non-humans. Like the the one version we talked about last time was ev all the non-humans are getting sick, and so the humans are like, we have to wipe out the non-humans. It's the only way that we can avoid getting infected. Sure. But the other way is like only humans can get it because so they, they don't have... the counterattack. Counter right, because humans don't have inherent magic in their blood because of technology. Okay, yeah. hold on. I like that idea much better. Yes. Um, if we have it in the Harbor City, the ships would have gone out before the barrier was raised and caused the disease to spread. Non-humans are the only ones affected. This gives the reason church hate as they believe it was a planned attack. Because okay. humans are the newest race. Yeah, usually. yeah. Yep, yep, and it's the same here. Okay, so yeah, they feel they're the newcomers. They feel like they're trying to be wiped out. Mm -hmm. Um, in the time since it happened, humans around the map have become infected, and the church is fighting it on all fronts, and. Okay, now we have to be careful because we still this still comes back to we don't want our party members to be hated in every single city they go to. So it, it needs to be only in cities that the church controls. Well, um, and that's why we had, originally we had talked about only having it be one race that was affected because it was easy to make that one race hated. But it fits into the story arc better if all races are hated. So I don't know how we combat that unless they're non-human owned cities. Well, theoretically, the way I have the map being built right now, there's going to be half a dozen major human settlements. Uh, right. Well, I should say human cities. So they're all going to be along the coast of that inner sea. And then there's going to be one on the other outer sea. Um, on the west and i would say that all of the settlements in between are probably a mixture of of humans and elves and dwarves well especially in the southeastern region it'll be quite a few wood elves mixed in with the humans and then if you go southwest it's going to be more dwarves mixed in because we've got the on the southwest of the dwarves and the southeast of the elves, right? So if we start the city, if we start the story in a settlement, well, not a settlement, in because like if you look at Dragonlance, it didn't start in a city. It started in a right. small town, the small town of Haven. There's a yep. tavern there and a few shops and buildings and a few people live there, but it's not like... Was the tavern in a tree? Yes, it was up in a tree. Okay. But it's not, it's not, it's not, Haven is not a huge city. It's not a, it's not a big deal. So that's, you know, we could start this off, which is the same way Star Wars Rebels starts off that way too. It doesn't start off in a big city. It starts off in this little outpost in the middle of nowhere on a backwards planet. And there is an Imperial yep. presence there because the Imperials have a garrison. So we can have a settlement. It's exact, it's exactly how Solo starts. I'm telling you. It is. I just, I'm more familiar with Rebels because I've watched it more recently. Um, but in both cases, yeah, you're dealing with a small settlement on a backwater planet. So we have a small town, small village. But you, but you have the governing presence yes, there. Yes, the governing presence is there. And so maybe, you know, that's that's the thing is that – okay, hold that thought. Church is funny. So all is the fronts. issue is, – is we're trying to figure out how do we get our party members into human-only cities? Is that the issue? Well, I'm just thinking about what happens when they go to these – because eventually they're going to need to go to a major city so because the quest gonna is going to send them. They're going to have to disguise themselves. Yeah, and it's going to become an. It, it's going to be no so different. The elf, the elf is going to have to wear a hood, you know. The dwarf's going to have to 
put the brownie on his back and put the hood over him or whatever to make him look tall. Yeah, because everybody's going to know that 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 little thing is not human if it's running around. The dwarf would be a problem because he's too small, so maybe the dwarf doesn't get to go into town. Um, Maybe. All right, all right. So this makes better sense now. Um, In a long time since it happened, humans around the map have become infected, and the church is finding all fronts in the major cities, uh, small towns, villages, etc. They could make the brownie be a baby. Like or swaddle less the brownie. Affected. That's true. It could be a less affected. And the church might maintain a presence there, but it's still commonplace to see elves, dwarves, especially if these settlements are close to the native homes of these races. Okay. Um,. We need a city with a barrier around it and an infected uh, map. And a map of infection. And a map of infection to think about where they might have gone. Okay. Um, I'd say we could probably just start with the major harbor city right there by the Wood Elf um, town. And it's not the capital city. But it is a major city, and that's where it happened. And maybe we could even say that's where, like, there was a tower of sorcery there. And they reached out and, like, whatever happened, you know, whether it was an explosion or whatever, you know, everything went wrong. And we're going to have to figure that out a little bit. That, That detail is not hugely important just at the moment. We just know, we just need to know that the disease started in this place. It was however many years ago. I mean, how long did Star Wars Rebels take place? Um, Star Wars Rebels timeline. Um, the series begins five years before Star Wars A New Hope, 14 years into the reign of the Galactic. So it's been 15 years. So we don't need it to be 50 years before. Yeah, this be this can Yeah, this can be within working. the last 10 years. Sure. That this happened. Okay, I like that. Um, right, because it's still recent enough that years that's why the the villages in between are still mixed. You know, they can't change really because they're rural. And we could even maybe shorten the time period. Um, five years ago, because you think, think about how think about how long it took for news to travel. Well, and just you, um, know. you know, think about how long it took for people to go from place to place, even with horses and stuff. I mean, it has to have happened within the last few years. Maybe it just happened. Um, We could, I mean, we could set it to where it, this just happened within the last six months. And so it could be happening. Like it could have just happened, you know? Okay. Yeah. Hold on a second. Uh, It just happened. And that would provide the easeability but still skepticism when yes. they get to the human ran cities. Like, well, we're not supposed to let you in. Oh, we're not affected. We're fine. We're fine. Oh, well, there's no rules to say when you can't or something like that. You know what I mean? Like a few weeks or months ago, the church. Okay, that's. I, I have a, I have an idea now. Hold that thought. The church enacted its versus magic um, rule and. Our party went on the run. That could be the thing. Like maybe they were in a major city when it went down. Yeah. And they had to go on the run, and so they know what's been going on. They get to this town, and they're there to do something against the local garrison of the church, because they're actively combating this this mistaken belief that, you know, that non-humans are evil and are spreading the disease and all this other stuff. And they're here to ransack them or find a note or whatever the case may be. And the kid doesn't know anything about it, perhaps, um, because it hasn't, the news hasn't gotten there yet, maybe. Um, or maybe it just has and, and nobody believes it. Who knows? We'll, we'll figure that out. Um, well, and that, that could be why they hate all the races too, all fey races too, because like if humans don't have magic, not all fey 
beings have magic, mm -hmm. right? But they're the only ones that have magic. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to go, rather than hunt all magic users, we're going to hunt everybody that's not a human. Yeah, well, I mean, I would say that technically, depending on how we looked at it, Yeah, I think that's a good idea, actually. Hold that thought. Um, only non-humans in the world can wield magic. That's an interesting thing because it gives our main character an extra... Not our main character, but it gives the kid an extra... Uh, um, hold that thought, though, because that doesn't make any sense. Let me look at my story notes. Uh, novel. Because didn't I say that the main party leader was a human? Hold on. Well, I don't remember. I gotta go look at my notes. Okay, you're looking. Mm, see, it doesn't quite make sense though, because I said the human leader is a wizard. Um, mm. And if we if we make all non humans, yeah, only non humans can use magic. Maybe it would. <sighs> hmm. Hmm. Make the wizard an elf, man. I'm telling you. Yeah, I'm thinking I need to, and maybe I make... Maybe yeah, a dwarf. I... He's a dwarven wizard. I could change this around a little bit. Because um... I like the idea of only non-humans can wield magic. Except it would be very interesting... Because that gives... That gives our main character an extra spark if if he is the first human to ever be able to learn so magic. That could be that could be it too, because if the humans are the newest race, they just haven't been in the world long enough to figure out the secrets of magic. So and they've been human, reliant on technology for so long; they were never allowed to adapt. Right. So this kid, oh, he's young enough. Idea. He's the later. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense, even too, because if they were reliant upon technology, they were never allowed. Their their magical abilities never evolved. But now, right. now that they've been without technology for so long, and I like the idea we had the other night, which we we brainstormed a little bit without recording the other night. Um, yeah, we'll we'll do it here. Um, we were saying that what if we what if we made the church like they're not actually using magic, like the power that they have are remnants from the time before so that's it's literally you know quantum technology that they're still able to use which allows them to to perform magical feats but it's not actual magic it's science um but it's through devices um and i kind of liked that idea um so i'm gonna yeah only non-humans in the world can change but so i'll need to change the idea of who the leader of the it's gonna have to be an elf now it's or half elf maybe um, that could be interesting. Ah, but then if I do half elf, people are gonna say you're ripping off Dragonlance because Tannis was a half elf. Um, it's gonna have to be a full elf. Um, and I'm gonna have to change some stuff around. We'll 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 look at that. But I like the idea that only non-humans can you can use magic. And um. That gives our, our kid another reason for being unique. Um, it also gives him another reason to be hunted because the church might view him as a, as a, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it's blasphemy. It's, it's a uh, yeah, sacrilege. Sacrilege. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. against the natural order. This isn't the way God intended us to be. Yeah. Um, you're, a, you're a human. How dare you use magic? Yeah, there's a word for it, and I'm blanking on the word right now. Um, okay, only non uses the word magic. This, this gives our kid another reason for being unique. Okay, so let's just backtrack real quick. It happened in a city, it happened. In the recent history, it's going on right now. Our main are characters. Of, are you thinking of the word heathen? Maybe. Pagan heathen. But there's a word, and I don't, I can't think of it off the top of my head right now. But She's a witch. A word. Burn her. Burn her. <laughs> no, first we have to throw her out of the lake and see if she floats. Well, how would we know? Oh, we have to throw a duck on. The... I can't remember how that all goes. But they gotta put a duck on the water. 
And if the duck sinks, but she floats, Something she's like a that. witch. So I was just thinking in, in the story arc of all of this, the way we could be forming all of this is by the time we get to the end of the series, we now have humans being able to be trained as magicians. And that starts off the next set of adventures mm -hmm. in the series of now humans sure can become. this this kid's gonna end up starting his own mages guild right or, or he'll be like the head he'll become like one of the head wizards and of the new order and yeah. you know okay so i kind of like that idea for story arc purposes so it happened this event happened um only humans got affected uh the city you know went blah um, some escaped off of boats and they're off, you know, or by land and they're off spreading the disease. Um, the church is actively trying to control it, contain it, keep it from spreading. They also think that it was caused on purpose by the non-humans because the non-humans were the mages that would help. Um, the church erected a barrier around that city a magical barrier to lock in the contagion and keep anything in there that's gonna be fun too because you know in order to find a cure we're gonna have to go in there mm -hmm. to get to the source so that's gonna be a fun chapter arc um anyway so our party members were maybe either in that city when it happened or they were in one of the other cities when the church went into lockdown mode and started hunting down any non-human so it's got to be one of the coastal cities, probably. And they... So it can't have happened right away. I would say we need to set this maybe six months after or maybe a year after. Um, somewhere in that timeline. I'll, I'll figure that out lately, cause later because I'm going to need to look at like how long would it take someone traveling sure. and sure. figure all that shit out. Um, yeah, because we also got to figure out why they come together, too. Like... Well, yeah, we got to figure out what is the main group? Why are they... Maybe. What are so they, they doing? They were probably in the harbor city i would say that's probably they, the yeah. they they saw it happen they saw it go down and they were like oh snap yeah and maybe they you know fled and then were hunkered down sheltering trying to help the sick and wounded in like one of the hamlets just outside of the major city as the church was putting up the barrier and then they're sitting there you know minding their own business trying to help people and then here come the crusaders like there's an elf kill the elf you know and just and they were like oh shit and so they go on the run and then what if you know what we need to figure out is what what are they doing in this little town what are they there Wait, for yeah what's the party's trade yeah what do they do yeah Why because are they in this town? if yeah. you look at like star wars rebels it was they were just trying to survive it was it was you know they were stealing stuff from the imperials to sell to the black market so that they could it's it's, exactly what they were doing in solo too. Yeah, yeah, they were, yeah. They were stealing to to sell. So Yeah. I think maybe that's a fine way to do it. Um is they're literally just in town to rob the garrison. They're gonna rob the if there's Imperial presence, if there's the Paladin presence, they're there to rob the Paladins. Yes. Yes, the garrison. They're so there. Kid, this kid's been living here for a year. The paladins have been beating up on everybody he's grown up with. You know, hold they're on, hold on, taking hold on. taxes. They're hold taking on, hold you know, on. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kid taking grew positions. up here. Paladins moved in, started roughing everyone up, charging taxes. What was? What else did you say? Um. Taking all the goods and everything. Taking like... all the goods, foods, etc., to feed the garrison of soldiers. So, he, so he's been he's sick been dealing with this for like a year. Yeah, right. kid is sick of it for the past year, and then he sees the party come in and they're gonna go steal from the garrison, and he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna tail them, you know, and figure out." And then he like trips or something, and they turn around. And he's there, and they're like, "Oh shit, we gotta let him join now." He knows too much. It's either to, let him yeah. join or, or kill him. <laughs> we'll have to figure that one out. But yeah, so they're they're just in town. We can we can probably make up a better reason for them than just they're there sure. to steal shit. Like maybe maybe there's maybe they're on the hunt for 
you know, uh, letter uh, orders sent down. Ah, yeah. And and they're trying to figure out what the next move is, and they're trying because they're trying to rescue as many of the. Because that's the other thing. If we're if we're talking about getting out into the outside of the cities, and we're in the main part of the the heart of the the human continent that stretches up through the middle there. You know, we're talking places that are weeks to months away from the major cities, and there are communities of like elves and you know dwarves. Like maybe maybe it's a settlement, and in the settlement, you know, it's a mixture. Like we've got three or four dwarven families who live here, along with like five or ten human families, and maybe an elf, you know, who lives by himself. And then on the other side, there's more elven families and stuff. So maybe they're looking for they're searching for the command lists or the orders that have been sent down so they can figure out where the paladins are going to be moving next to try to get ahead of them, to rescue people. Maybe they're, and maybe that's the ulterior motive is they're recruiting for this uh, rebellion. Um, this, this alliance of human, of, of elves and of wood elves, dwarves and, and, um, brownies and then eventually we're going to get into the halflings because i don't even where i'm putting the halflings yet but they're not player race but you know we'll eventually bring one of them into the you know story um we got to figure out where the halflings are located too but um that could be the ulterior motive is they're is they're putting together they're gathering recruits for the alliance for this rebellion and telling people hey if you want to be safe go here you know like go to the elven kingdom or go to the dwarven kingdom or um and that's the other which is a side plot we're gonna have to figure out is is at what point does the church decide that it's not enough to just seek them out in the small villages they decide okay now we need to go take out the entire wood elf population because that would probably be enough to get the high elves out of hiding and bring them out and say, uh, uh, no, 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 you little scumbags. Um, so, but that's, that's not book one, probably. Um, maybe, I don't know if it is, it's at the end of book one. Anyway, we're still dealing with the beginning. Um, so I, I think we've got a good basis of that. It happened. It happened recently within the last six months, maybe even within the last three months, just to figure out timelines of how quickly it spreads from there. Only non-humans can wield magic. I like that idea a lot because it gives the church a reason to hate non-humans and to blame them for this thing happening. We should probably think a little bit more about what exactly is the mutation? Um, I mean, does it turn them into zombies? I mean... Right, so it kills... It killed the ones immediately, right? Like in the, at the, at the beginning, like at the at the heart of it, it's gonna kill them. I'm assuming. Well, I think originally you and I had said that we wanted once they put the shield up, we were assuming that there was still gonna be creatures left inside. Right. Exactly. So. I don't know. So the, are those are those ones that just turned after like two weeks of exposure? And that would actually make for more compelling if we're talking pandemic, as opposed to something sure. where it happened and it killed everybody. I would say is it, it, you know, the mages came in, did their spell. Everybody thought it was okay, but it actually mutated them. Yeah. And yeah, then we, all we... of a sudden, all of a sudden, oh, so that's even. I, I like this idea. Hold that thought. I, I just had a brainstorm. So you know, everybody's getting sick. The paladins couldn't cure it because their quantum technology wasn't enough. They needed magic Um, because this is probably a magical illness. So the mages come in and they're like, okay, we'll help you out. And they do. And at first glance, it appears that everyone's getting better and everyone's cured. Three or four days go by. Everybody gets better. They start going back to their homes. A week goes by. All of a sudden, you start getting these reports of like, you know, screams in the night and the next morning, like everyone's dead except for the person who was cured. And that person is nowhere to be found. And then there's like the rumors of this creature roaming the night, you know, eating people. And then it's 
three or four creatures eating people in three or four other houses. So it could be something where they started to get better. A week went by. Suddenly they were all, you know, now they turned into something different. And they started turning into these flesh-eating beasts. And whether or not they change. We, we have to give them a physical change, too. Yeah, they, they're going to have to, like, grow scales or something. Like, like somebody's going to have to wake up one morning and be like, oh, that's the scream. And then that night they're eating people. That's gonna have to, I'm going to have to write a prologue for all of this too. Because the prologue is going to have to be the disease happening. And the prologue is going to have to be probably from the perspective of the church, maybe. Or the, ma- or the Mages Guild. Yeah, I'll have to figure that one out. Well, I'm using this omni, omni, omniscient, um, third person yeah. omniscient, so it's... Technically, it could be from lots of different people's perspectives. Um, ah, that would be kind of cool. That would be kind of cool to do it from each perspective. So that's going to be the prologue, I guess. The prologue will be... What's the disease? How to happen? Yeah, yeah, how did this all get started? And then the first chapter is going to pick up, you know, three months later or something. Um, but yeah, I like the idea of the prologue. But I like the idea of, you know, they start to get better... A day or two, three days go by, and then they then they can then they change, and it's like there's, there's definitely a sci-fi movie I've seen before where it's like that. They think they're cured, but then like the next day they wake up and they're growing something. What the hell was that? <laughs> Probably like thirty different sci-fi movies in the last yeah, five for real. years. No joke. Um, well, I think I have enough to go off now for the first. To get like the first chapters going, at least to do a chapter outline, because I already need to go now and I need to adjust who the, you know, character members are. Think it, it doesn't even have to be a mutation, really. You remember? Did you ever watch Spider-Man like from two thousand one, two thousand two? Yeah, many times. And Green Goblin, right? So it just created an alternative personality, which just him, took over, which just took over himself. So, yeah, because he injects himself with that serum that they make. So it becomes ultra strong and ultra awesome, but it creates this alternative psychopath mentality. I don't know. I th- yeah, I think we have thing, to. But... Yeah, I think we're gonna need to think about that. Like a physical mutation could be a lot of fun. Yeah, because then you can see like this. You the party could be walking and see this thing just like. Whoo! Yeah. That's how Doom is, the movie and the game and everything. You know, you get bit by it, and the guy starts slowly changing. You know, starts feeling the need to eat something, and then all of a sudden, the next thing you know, he's a monster. Yeah, I mean, because definitely it's it's a thing where once they, I mean, it's basically the zombie. It's the zombie disease. Yeah. yeah. You know, we just it's it's our version of basically we're doing zombies in medieval. Um, okay. So are they fast zombies, or are they walkers like The Walking Dead? No, yeah. it's going to be... They need to be fast. They need to be super... super yeah. yeah. A big enough threat that it... You know, they have to wall off the city with a... Because if, if it was just slow-moving walkers, one fireball and they're done. You know what I mean? Like, zombies would never survive in a world of magic. Um, so they need to be... Um, And maybe that's the backstory for them is is why they started getting sick, why this pandemic happened is because, you know, the humans came from, you know, they come from a place of no magic and they live in a city that's all about using quantum technology and just maybe over the, you know, thousands of years or wherever, however long it's been and they've been here and it's been mixed with the magical essence of this part of the world that started to mutate certain gene pools to where they started to become enhanced by or infused with this quantum energy. And that was reacting to the magical essence. And that caused them to get sick because it was like they're repelling this, this foreign substance and the mages come in and try to cure the magical illness. Yes. 
and they think that it works. But what it really did was it only worked for a minute because it's kind of like if you take antibot antibiotics for like two days, but you don't take the whole round, yep. the the, the Mutate. virus mutates and comes back even stronger. And maybe that's what happens is they come in and they cure them. And then within the next 48 hours, like the juices inside of these people are just like, eh, and they just become these, we have to figure out what they look like and what they're, and we are, don't, and, and yeah. And are they, are they, do they eat people? Do they just kill people? Like what do they do? It would be interesting if they ate people <laughs> or, or, or like they're seeking the essence within <laughs> give me your essence. essence um or do they only eat like livers you know so these people just find these remains and bust open the just the liver's gone you know we could take this a step further and say that they crave quantum ah, energy the energy quantum energy because they've they basically they've mutated the quantum energy presence inside the, the the humans, and so that's why the church is so terrified of them because they like, want the relics. They they hunger for the relics, um, and they hunger for the power of the church and the power mm. that the paladins wield. Because if if we make it that way, and if it if if, if everything the paladin like their armor, their weapons. They're going to be imbued with that. And like if they're wearing that armor every day and every, so this, it's seeped into their blood and just over the years, like they married and they've had kids and their kids have had kids. And that 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 toxicity, so to speak, has seeped out through the human race. And so everyone has a little bit inside of them. So these creatures are naturally drawn to humans because they have that inside of them, but they really go crazy. Like if there's a knight around, like if there's a paladin around, it's like they'll ignore the other humans and they'll just enrage on like the, the paladin because they want that energy source. And that would be interesting too, is if is is if because of that, because of the mutation, they also had developed innate. Like the 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 paladins need to use an item to you know. They can't just innately use the quantum energy. They, they, they. It's like, you know, sometimes in some stories, wizards need a staff to do magic sure. or a book. Like they need access to their tools to be able to, you know, be effective soldiers. Um. This, this could also. Hang on, where did that thought go? Brain fart. No, brainstorms, not brain farts. Well, this one was a. A left me like a fart in a hurricane. <laughs> the storm took it off. <laughs> it went away. Wait. Um. Anyway, yeah. Um. Oh, I was saying that could create a fun subplot where, at some point down the road, maybe the church decides they want to try to control it, and so they start capturing the creatures and seeing if they can't turn them into super soldiers because ah. that that could be the thing is that these creatures have innate abilities because they have they've adapted and so they can you know so they have it infused in them so they don't have to use items yes perhaps. exactly that's that what you're headed? yes oh, that's okay. where i was heading so yeah it's it's they're super fast super strong because they're infused did you ever it's probably before your time it was before my time but i watched like the remakes the bionic shows like the bionic man bionic woman do you know uh -huh. anything about those Okay. Well, it's basically just these human beings who were infused with bionics, and it allowed them to be super strong, super fast, sure. super whatever. Um, but this could be literally they're infused with quantum energy, and so they are inherently super strong, super fast. They can wield telepathy. They can mm. do telekinesis. Like They could do lots of different things, and maybe the older the mutant, the more powerful they are. Um and that could give rise to a subplot where we have mutants who are actually intelligent. I was just say, so can these mutants make colonies? We've literally created a whole other race. Then. Well, yeah, no, I think that's a great, I think that's a great subplot for down the road. Like as this thing grows, maybe we start to see this sub race of beings that we have to learn how, how to I, coexist with. 
That's how I Am Legend was in the book. The book. Did you ever read the book? No, I, I didn't. Oh, it's really good. It's way better than the movie. So in the book, the zombies can talk, and they're they have you know, they they're the super race. Um, and so oh, like it goes through, it goes through. So Will Smith's character in the book is actually an old racist black or a white guy, and he like has like his neighbors of course got infected and everything like that. So like he'll actually like yell at them through the windows and stuff like that, and they yell back. And at the end. Like there's this whole scene where they he's been captured by them and they're like debating what to do with him and everything like that. Yeah, so they're the this totally evolved. Yeah, you should read the book. It's really I cool. Should well, I like because that's, ha- that's what happened is they you know it was a worldwide vaccine or whatever, and they basically created a race of mutants. Well, I think I think I like this idea. Going, I think I like that line of thought because this is new. You know, if this happened within the last three to six months, we don't know what's going to happen. Right. Or, or they don't know. All they know is it happened in the city. You know, there's, they, these, things. there's these things. They're trying to react to it. They think the mages caused it. And so they're reacting to that. Meanwhile, you know, some of them escaped and maybe they have gone out and formed colonies. The Those who escaped, they become intelligent. Once... They, once, yeah, once they get once they get past the the point of like mindless hunger, like maybe they realize, which I suppose is somewhat like vampires too. Like a lot of the vampire stories, when the vampire first becomes a vampire, there's a period where he can't control his thirst and he's just this mindless killing machine. But then after time goes on, he starts to realize, I need to hang on a second. Like I've con- I've, I've I'm no longer hungry. If I keep doing this, they're going to come after me with porks, forks, and uh, excuse me, torches and pitchforks. Like maybe I need to think about how to survive, and so they become these more intelligent creatures. So I like the idea of all of that, but that's stuff we can evolve later on. So I like the yeah. idea. We we know that this happened. They appear to be cured, and within like a 48 hour, 72 hour period of time, they become these super powerful, super strong, super thing, and they attack the paladins and and anybody who has the bloodline of a paladin um so that would be another interesting thing is like maybe not because not all humans carry the bloodline and so that could be the thing is like maybe the only ones who get converted to are people who are of a direct lineage from someone who was you know was a paladin or is you know what i mean like because that bloodline has been tainted so to speak by the use of quantum technology for so long and the use of these items um i like all of that it's very interesting for sure and 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 i definitely think i have enough to go off of anyway to start outlining the book and then as i have as i have questions that pop up i can just put the questions down in notes and then we next time we meet up we can figure those out i like it well i think that's enough for tonight um so for those of you tuning in obviously uh feel free to leave your comments in the section below here on youtube um and if you really like what we're talking about and you want to get involved in the juicy details and see all the behind the scenes stuff that's going on subscribe to the patreon which is linked below um because we're doing i don't know three four sometimes five posts a week we're doing daily updates on tiktok um you know three four five videos a week here on youtube but all the super juicy stuff and we're doing a lot of stuff you know for free here on youtube and tiktok um and as well as on discord but uh, the super juicy details like actually finding out who the main characters are watching those main characters get developed what their names are what the races are all these other things we're doing that on patreon all the rule set stuff it's happening on patreon all of christina's concept art like when we show we might share a teaser out on tiktok that shows a piece being worked on but then we go into what the piece is on discord with all of the or excuse me on patreon with all of the behind the scenes like in progress you know so you'll see seven eight different images before we get to the final one um and we go into the thought process behind all of those so if you like all that stuff make sure to subscribe over at patreon and don't forget to subscribe to this channel hit the bell icon so you get updates when we go live But that'll be it for us tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for your support. Let us know 
thoughts on all the stuff we talked about tonight. We'll see you in the next episode.